So what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to uh, try to find a pair of numbers that have some very special uh, characteristics. If I were to ask you to find two numbers with their product is equal to 15 and their sum equals 8, you may be able to pull that out. Well, there are 5 and 3. That works. But what about answer? 5 and 3. But what happens if we complicate this slightly? What happens if instead of making the numbers nice to deal with, let's, let's make them a little bit harder? Let's do the product being 72 and their sum is 18. There's a lot of possibilities for product two numbers to be 72 and the sum is 18. So how do you actually find those pair of numbers? And to do this, what I would strongly recommend you do is to form a table. And what you're going to put on top is the product equals 72 and the sum is equal to 18. So here we have on the left, you're going to list all pairs of numbers whose product is 72. Once you have them, then you're going to come over here to your sum, and you are going to start adding up those pairs of numbers in order to see what you get. So how do you find all the pairs of numbers? There's lots of them out there. There's like 3 and 24. There's uh, 9 and 8. So how do you know you've got them all? What you're going to do is you're going to start with the number 1. Great number to start with. You're going to take 1. Does it go into 72? The answer to that is yes. How many times? 72 times. Okay. 1 goes into all integers rather nicely. Then you're going to increase the left-hand number by 1. 2. Does 2 go into 72 evenly? Yes, it does. How many times? Well, it goes in there 36 times. Increases by 1 and 3. Does 3 go into 72? Yes, it does. 24 times. 4. Does 4 go into 72? Sure does. 18 times. Now you may think all numbers go into 72, and that's not the case. Because the very next one, 5, does not. 5 does not go into 72 evenly. If you tried to, you'd have a remainder of 2. So 5 doesn't count, you're not going to list it. 6 does. Goes into 72 12 times. Does 7? No. You try taking 72 and divide it by 7, you're going to have a remainder of 2. So you don't list 7. 8 does, 8 goes in 72 9 times. So you continue this process until you get to the point where you start going up the other column. So we've done 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8. The very next number we would have tried is 9, but it's already here. So then you can stop. So now we have all six pairs of numbers whose product is 72. Now you go through and just add them up. 1 and 72 is 73. 2 and 36 is 38. 3 and 24 is 27. 4 and 18 is 22. 6 and 12 is 18. 8 and 9 is 17. The pair that gives you the sum being 18, 6 and 12, so this is the process you're going to go through to, in order to find the product two numbers to be a specified uh, value, and the sum is a different value. Now I'm going to vary this in my or vary this process in my very next step or very next example, I should say. Instead of looking at sum, let's look at the difference. So let's look at the product two numbers is equal to 100, and the difference is equal to 21. Now, the sum versus difference, when we get back to factoring trinomials, there will be a way to know when you use difference and when you use sum, and I'll get to that when we uh, are back in factoring trinomials. So we want the product of two numbers to be 100, and its difference is 21. 
again, you start the same thing. You're going to go through all the numbers whose uh, goes into 100 evenly. One goes into 100 evenly 100 times. Imagine that. Two goes into 100 50 times. Three doesn't go into 100. The four does. It goes into 100 25 times. Five does. And it goes into there 20 times. Six doesn't. Not a seven. Eight. Not evenly. Nine doesn't, but ten does ten times. And if you notice, we've now started working on the right hand side of our pairs. So we can stop here. So right now we have five pairs of numbers whose product is 100. So now you go through and look at the difference of these two numbers. So you're going to kind of work from right to left, but difference being 21. 100 minus 1 is 99. 50 minus 2 is 48. 25 minus 4 is 21. 20 minus 5 is 15. And 10 minus 10 is 0. Our pair of numbers is right there, 4 and 25. Difference is 21, and its product is 100. When you're working on a problem, once you find your pair, you can stop. There's, I mean, we're trying to find two numbers whose product is 100 and its difference is 21. Once we found it, there's no sense in continuing on. So once you have your pair of numbers, you can stop and return to the problem.